So we've been learning that acceleration is the rate at which an object's velocity changes. We can picture that with a motion map as is shown here. But what does that really mean if we wanted to look at values, at numbers that describe this, this change in something's motion? Well, first of all, we would need to define a few things. If the, if the object's velocity is changing, then there's a starting velocity and an ending velocity. And in physics, we use the terms initial and final instead of start and end. So the initial velocity or the initial speed is how fast the object moves at the start of the problem or sort of whatever story we're telling about this object. And so instead of just using V, we put a little subscript, a little I, that stands for initial. And then the final velocity is how fast the object moves at the end of the story or the end of the problem. This should say final, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, and so that is gonna be called V sub F or the final velocity. What we are interested in with accelerations is the change in the velocity. And so we steal a, a symbol from math, this delta symbol, this triangle, that always means the change in something. And when you find the change in something, you always take the later number minus the earlier number. So in our case, we would take the final velocity and we would subtract from that the initial velocity. So let's consider this question. A car is traveling at eight meters per second in a school zone and it accelerates. What would be the car's change in velocity? We're gonna solve this in just a minute, but before we do, let's think about something that's very important. And that is, what is the car's velocity at the end of the motion? That would be the car's final velocity. So the final velocity would be the 20 meters per second. That's what's happening at the end of the story when the car leaves the school zone. So we can use that now to solve the question. To find the car's change in velocity, we would take the later value, the 20, and we would subtract the earlier value, the initial value, eight. And 20 minus eight is 12. And since we're talking about velocities or speeds, then our unit would be meters per second. All right, so we're almost set to be able to figure out values of acceleration. Let's look back at our definition. So <clears throat> acceleration is the rate at which an object's velocity changes. So we've defined what we mean by a velocity change. Now let's think about rate. Anytime you see the word rate, it means that we're talking about as time goes on. How something changes divided by the time. And so our, our formula for acceleration is going to be the change in the velocity, delta V, divided by the amount of time it takes for this to happen. So A will equal delta V over T. Let's take a look at the units that we'll use for acceleration. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's first look at the units of our acceleration. So the units of acceleration are gonna to have to be different from everything else. You know, we've got velocity in meters per second. We've got, let's stop. So our formula has delta V on the top of a fraction and time T on the bottom of a fraction. So that gives us a hint as to what our units would be we would be taking meters per second and dividing by seconds. Now watch out on your algebra here. Your seconds do not cancel out because the top part is being divided by seconds and the bottom is just seconds. So in fact, we could write this as meters per second per second, or sometimes we're, we take a little shortcut and we write meters per second squared. Although if you're typing it out, it's gonna be a lot easier to write it like this anyways. All right, let's take a look at an example here. A sailboat is moving at 12 meters per second and the wind increases its velocity to a certain value, 
we're going to try to figure out what the acceleration is. Let's first identify what sorts of things we um, have in this problem. So the time is going to be measured in seconds, and that certainly is given to us. Then we have two velocities. One is the motion before something happens, and one is the motion afterwards. One's at the beginning of the story, and one is at the end. And so here we have a sailboat traveling at 12 meters per second at the beginning, and then 18 meters per second at the end. And we should then be able to figure out what the acceleration is from this. So let's take a look. Our formula that we just talked about was delta V over T in order to find our acceleration. Our delta V is going to be the difference between our velocity values, making sure that we use the later one first. We list that first. So 18 minus 12, that gives us 6 meters per second as our change in velocity. And then we can finish off the problem and say that our acceleration would be 6 meters per second divided by our time of 10 seconds. Again, those seconds do not cancel out. They produce this new unit for acceleration, meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Either one's fine. Now, if you needed to use a calculator to do some of that math, of course, that is always fine. All right, take a look at this question and see if you can see what's maybe a little bit different about it, what seems to be missing maybe from the information. The, um, you know, something that's a little different here is there's actually two things. First of all, the skateboard is slowing down, okay? And so that's a little different from the way we normally think about acceleration. Most people think of acceleration as speeding up. But in physics, it really just means a change in the velocity. And so changing from 8 meters per second to coming to a stop would be a, um, a, a definite acceleration, a change in the velocity. It's going to turn out to be a negative number if we do this correctly. The other thing, though, is this phrase comes to a stop. That actually represents a number. It tells us what's happening at the end of the story. If the object comes to a stop at the end of the story, its velocity at the end, its final velocity, is zero. Let's fill in the other pieces here. So our time is four seconds. And our initial velocity, the way things started, was 8 meters per second. And from this, we should be able to figure out acceleration. Similar problem to what we did before. I'll write the formula down so everybody understands my thinking. Let's figure out what that final, I'm sorry, for that change in velocity is. We are going to start with the ending value and subtract the beginning value, the final minus the initial. And we get a negative number, okay? But that actually makes sense because we're losing speed, we're slowing down. So the delta, the change, is negative. Then if we go ahead and finish off the problem, our delta V on top and the amount of time on the bottom this comes out to be negative two. Negative two meters per second per second. All right, let's talk a little bit about that. The fact that this came out to be negative, positive acceleration values, positive values of A, are gonna mean that something is speeding up. And negative acceleration values are gonna mean that something is slowing down. So expect that as you're working. Also, we noticed a, a kind of a, a phrase, some words that had to be translated into a number. So the phrase comes to a stop or something like that would mean that the ending velocity or the final velocity would be zero. But then here's another one that sometimes comes up. 
if something starts from rest. Okay, so it's just sitting there and then it just suddenly begins to move. That is going to be an initial velocity of zero. So we'll have to look for that as well. So there's a second way that we can look at this formula. Um, and I want to show you how we're going to do this, but really the most important thing is not that you can do the, the four steps up above here, but that you, you can use this equation down here. But where this equation comes from is that if you take the sort of the definition of acceleration here and you do a little algebra, you can get it into a slightly different form. So if we multiply both sides by t, the t's cancel out here, and we have just t times a, or a lot of times, it, just in physics, it's written a times t. And then we can remember that delta v is the change in the velocity, so it would be the final minus the initial. And then we could add v sub i to both sides of the equation, just like we would do if they were numbers, and we would get this equation here. And again, the way it's usually written in physics is something more like this. You will have that provided to you on tests and quizzes and so forth so that you have that available. Let's see how it works in a problem. So notice what's different about this question compared to the, the first two is in, in those we were asked to find the acceleration. And here we can see those unusual units, meters per second per second, given in the problem. This question is asking how fast is it going after something happens? So that right away we can tell is going to be our final velocity. That's gonna be our question mark. How fast is it going at the end of the motion, at the end of the story? Let's go back here and read. A motorcycle is moving at 10 meters per second and then it accelerates at two meters per second per second for six seconds. So this, 10 meters per second is what it was doing at the start of the motion, at the beginning of the story. That's our initial velocity. The time is six seconds, and our acceleration rate is two meters per second per second, or again, two meters per second squared. So you can start with this formula Okay, it will work. It just requires you to do a little bit of algebra. So what I would suggest is that instead, we pick the equation that's sort of meant for this, that's already uh, written um, in terms of everything that we're given and doesn't have fractions in it. So my, my math is gonna be a lot uh, easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and put in the information that, um, that we know. All right, so our acceleration number, our A, is two. Remember that in math, if you have two letters next to each other, that means multiply. So a good idea is to put those in parentheses. Our time, T, is six seconds. And then we're going to add our initial velocity, our 10. All right. At this point, you could grab a calculator and just put this all in in one step, but let's go ahead and we'll do it in two steps. First, we would do multiplication. Two times six is 12. And then we would add those numbers together. And that gives us our final velocity of 22 meters per second. I know it's meters per second because I have found a velocity. I have found a speed, and that's what speed is measured in. 